Have I been drinking? <sighs> Definitely not. And it totally wasn't moonshine. But if I had been, it'd only make me more excited for this. We ready for another cloth kit? And you know what a cloth kit means? Vintage sewing machine. Oh, I'm so glad this table has wheels. So, this machine, it is Benina. It is from the 1970s-ish. A little bit of wiggle room there. It's late 70s, early 80s. It's actually the same kind that a lot of schools used at the time, which is one of the reasons I'm so happy to find it. And no, no, don't worry, I am sticking to the singers. This one is actually brought for a friend. I am trading her for... Ooh, do I show you or do I leave it as a surprise? No, I'm gonna show you, one sec. So I am trading this banana for this little machine, and yes, it's already in my possession because she actually lent me this to film a video and then I wanted to keep it, so we're swapping. And this is a little Soviet Union sewing machine that is tiny and in fully working order, but that is for a video another time. Let's get back to the one we actually want to talk about and let's get out of the case and have a look at how she actually is. The case opens in my direction. That's not really any good for you guys, is it? Spin. So this is an electric binning machine. She does work. I did check that before I brought her and I paid, I don't actually know how much for her. I got them in a bit of a group buy deal. We'll talk about the others another day, but she has a lovely measuring tape along the bottom. She has an extension table in the bottom of the pack. She has, well, she's just really, really beautiful. So we're going to get her out and we're going to try stitching with her once she's had a bit of a clean. So let's quickly get her out and put her on this little table because my big desk is currently taken up by a very large sewing project that I cannot clear up at the moment but we also want this for October because autumn skirt anyone? And actually before we look at the machine let's have a quick look at the skirt. Okay so cloth kits for those of you who don't know are basically kits that come with everything you need to make an item of clothing. This one is a skirt and let's have a look and see what we've got. This is the skirt we're going to be making on the vintage machine. It doesn't look too complicated and it actually kind of almost looks like a Victorian walking skirt which I'm pretty enthusiastic about. We have some thread, we have buttons, we have poppers so it's good because some of the cloth kits, well a lot of my cloth kits don't actually come with this anymore because it got traded in. We then have, oh that is nice fabric, this lovely brown stripy fabric. Okay, she's actually quite a compact little sewing machine, I really like it. She's also solid metal which is super cool. She is an 801, was made in Switzerland. She has a front loading bobbin with some thread already in there. I think she's got an extra bobbin, yep, just at the back there which is actually kind of a brownie red thread so we can probably use both of those which is nice. No, nope, cat's got a mouse. Where's the mouse? Oh you didn't, where is it? Did you let it go upstairs? Okay, what was I talking about again? <laughs> yeah, she's got quite a lot of stitches. We've got a zigzag stitch, a straight stitch. Don't know if she does button, oh no, she does do buttonhole, but I don't think we've got any spare feet. I did test her out in the shop. She did sew quite smooth, so I'm fairly confident that we can just plug her in and get going. And actually, I also cleaned her in the shop, which if you subscribe and stay tuned for a few months, you will actually see in one of my wearing homemade clothes for a week video. Okay, so I've just flicked it on and we have a light, which I wasn't entirely expecting, but it's really, really cool. It's nice and clean. I did, oh, now I say it's nice and clean. I've just followed a bunch of dirt. <sighs> That's gonna bug me if I don't clean it. One sec. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is even after a few minutes, this light and actually this plate is getting very hot. There is the switch here, which turns the light on and off. So I think for the moment, we're just gonna leave it off while I thread up the machine. We may as well put the brown thread on straight away. We can turn the feed dogs on and off. God, I'm almost sad that I'm trading this machine. That is so handy. Let's do a few of these and see how we go. Beautiful. Oh, that's interesting. So if I'm sewing in a straight line and I twist this button here, it actually moves the needle over a bit and then flicking it back, it just goes, that is, I mean, I'm guessing that's like a a function of the zigzag stitch. Oh, here you go, I think this is the reverse. So we're sewing forward, yeah, and then forward. Interesting. Emma, you've got a really good machine. <laughs> it's fine. I did get myself a binina, I just hope it's as nice as this one. <laughs> now we know that works, I think we're gonna turn it off for the moment and sort out the skirt. 
lay out all the pieces, get it pinned, and then we can get sewing. I'm not going to bother changing the bobbin thread, I will rewind it when it runs out because we only have two bobbins and I'm not going to unwind an entire bobbin and waste that thread when I can just use it up and really I don't actually care if the bobbin thread is a different colour than my skirt. So I laid out all the pieces of the skirt to check we had everything we needed while the iron got up to temperature to press those creases out. And again, I love cloth kits because yet again, there is a piece literally labeled spare material for repairs. I love that they include this and also means I have test piece to make sure that all the stitching and tension for the machine is correct for the fabric. I ironed all the pieces before finding some iron on interfacing and attaching it to the waistband as the instructions said. I then pinned on the pockets and got sewing. Well, geez, she sews nicely. Now, since ironing it, this fabric does seem to have a uh, particular smell to it. I don't think it's cigarettes, but it's definitely gonna need washing before I wear it out anywhere if I don't want to get loads of weird, dirty looks. We're gonna finish sewing it first though, because otherwise all the fabric's gonna fray and it's gonna really bug me. And speaking of fabric fraying, yes, I am indeed going to I don't think it's cheating, but let's call it cheating. I am going to cheat <laughs> and I am going to use my big machine to overlock all of the edges because I don't like things fraying and it annoys me a lot. So we're just going to quickly run and do that for the pockets and then we can stitch the skirt pieces together. Am I going to get this done in a night? Don't know. Probably not, to be honest, because I think I might want to go to bed soon, but we'll at least get the two skirt front and back attached. I love these cloth kits because they are normally quite easy and I think I might have some new ones, which ooh, excited about. So let's get this going. With the pockets on, we press the seams, then pin the front and back of the skirt together before stitching once more. Sewing with this machine was such a pleasure. It was strong, moved nicely, and for an old machine was pretty quiet too. I'm actually super happy with how it works. Even before I serviced it at the shop, I loved how it felt, but after an oil, it's almost as if it's never been used. Once the seams were attached, we overlocked those edges before I realized how late it was. Okay, so we now have an actual skirt, which if I just gathered it all up and stuck it on the waistband would work, but we actually want to do this properly with the pleats because I think that's going to look lovely. However, it is about midnight. I am tired. I need to take my makeup off. I've had it on all day because we've been very busy doing YouTube-y things today. So I'm going to go to bed and I will catch you guys in the morning. The next morning I began by pressing those waistbands in half, then pinning the pleats. And as this is going to take a while, because when are pleats not fiddly little things to do, let's have a quick chat about this new sewing machine. Benina 801s were produced in Switzerland during the 1970s and early 80s. Here in the UK, they were a common machine used by schools as they were often strong and reliable and could put up with all that abuse students love to put them through. The feed dogs also have the ability to be easily withdrawn using a small button on the side of the machine, making this perfect for quilting or darning holes in clothing. The small free arm machine also makes it easy getting into those troublesome areas, but with the table attachment it can be used as a normal flatbed as well. Not to mention that this machine is known as one of the best Benina has ever produced. It's heavy duty, made for all sorts of fabric and perfect for dressmaking, upholstery, quilting and probably anything else that you want to sew with it too. I'd honestly say that this thing feels strong enough to sew for a lever, but unfortunately I don't have any scraps to try that out. Okay, so one problem that I have very quickly come across is the fact that the skirt is definitely too big for me, which is fine, I'd rather it be too big than too small. So what I've done is I have already added an extra pleat in the front and I'm also going to add an extra several pleats in the back. I've marked on the waistband how much smaller I need it, which the entire waistband fits around my entire waist, which I don't think it's supposed to do that, but I'm not going to complain because actually that makes it easier to make the front kind of where I want it to be. So we're just going to rearrange these pleats and carry on. Stitching the pleats went really smooth, though one thing I have noticed about this machine is that its full speed is still very slow compared to my modern day genome which can do up to a thousand stitches per minute. Unfortunately I wasn't able to find the stitch count to figure out what the Benina does in comparison. I also noticed a few times that it sometimes doesn't start as strong as it should. Now this is easily fixed by just spinning the wheel on the side a tiny bit and I'm guessing this is probably a motor or electrical problem and that's not something I know how to fix but considering this machine is going to my friend who's a very experienced seamstress I am not too worried about it. Oh and I stitched the end of the waistband before taking it to the iron board where I trimmed the corners and turned everything the right way around, pressed it and pinned the inside of the waistband in place. Okay, so I love the fabric of the skirt. I'm not 100% sold on the design, but maybe it's just because I haven't actually ironed the pleats and some of them are sitting really weird so it doesn't look very neat, but oh well, we can fix that in a minute. I do love this bit at the front. So the inside, I've got it, I don't think you're supposed to, but it does up at the front and then this will sit over the top and be buttoned either side. Also means that there's no seeable things for 
like seams and everything because the seams are with the pockets which are tucked under here and actually talking of pockets does it fit my phone oh just it's a little bit tight but it, it does go in there there's no room for really for anything else maybe a pack of tic tacs if i'm careful to be fair though you can't see it dragging the skirt down which is one of the main reasons i normally hate putting pockets on these things so with the inside waistband all pinned the only bit of machine sewing i still need to do is the hem so let's mark that up and get that done and then we can focus on the hand stitching for the hem of the skirt i marked out a straight line around the base making sure that all the seams were even one of them I did have to cut on a slight angle, but I think it'll be fine, no one's really gonna notice. Once that was done, I then turned up the hem and pinned it into place, before heading over to the machine where I stitched it down. Here is where it would have been a good idea to use the extension table, however, my brain just did not think of it, and so I was stitching this very large piece of fabric on a very small area, and it made it really, really difficult and way harder than it should have been. Oh well, lesson learned, I suppose I'll have to remember for next time. With that, I hand stitched the waistband, carefully doing lots of little teeny tiny neat stitches in line with the machine stitches that were already there. Okay, so I've actually just realised that I'm pretty sure I've done the pockets wrong, but I'm at a point now I'm, I'm not going to change it. But thing is, this waistband is supposed to sit like this, essentially. If it sits like that, the inside of the pocket looks like that and is left open because this bit is folded back along. So I think... I read the instructions and it said to fold the front bit along and I'm guessing I just misread the back and this bit was supposed to be left flat in this little end so that it would sit against the pocket because in theory the waistband also shouldn't come this far forward it should kind of line up like that and then the pocket could have gone there and we would have had essentially if we'd look through this way would have had the pocket lying in there I can't be bothered to change it. I'd have to unpick a bunch of hand stitching. I could just cut it across the top and no, we're not gonna do that. No, we're definitely not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do instead is just run along these two raw edges with a blanket stitch, just gonna do it by hand, mostly because I'm too lazy to get the machines out again. I'm gonna run these across by hand and then we're gonna attach the buttons and you know what, now it's been out of its packet for a little while, it actually smells a lot better. <laughs> Still gonna wash it before I actually wear it. I'm pretty happy with how it's come out, as much as the pleats definitely do need an iron. How it does up is really interesting, and I think I might steal this for my cosplays because it's a good way to hide seams and also have some storage space. Using a blanket stitch, which is basically the hand version of an overlocking stitch, I went along the raw edges of the pockets. Could I have done this by machine earlier? Well, yes, I could have if I had thought about it then. Before going to bed, I worked out where I wanted the buttonholes and cut them in so that I could take this project with me in the morning. The next day, I had to drop my car off at the garage. Nothing serious, thankfully, but will be a half an hour turned into nearly three hours of sitting in this cute little bus cafe, sewing the buttonholes. Once home, I marked where I wanted the hook and eye and the buttons before starting to sew those down too. Oh, and for these bits, including the buttonholes, I'm actually using the thread that came with the kit, which is such a nice thread. Honestly, if you guys ever find cloth kits in charity shops, you should totally 100% get them because they are always of such good quality and really easy to use. All in all, this skirt has buttons, poppers, and hooks and eyes. That's no less than nine separate two-part fastenings I had to attach here. An iron later to help set the pleats in place, and we were ready to try this baby on. And yes, the only thing I had to go with the skirt was a black polo neck. I know I need to expand my wardrobe. Okay, so currently my house is an utter mess, so you're getting the background of two projects that I am currently working on. This one you will see in a couple of weeks, that one you will see in at least a month. So my final thoughts on this skirt and honestly I don't love it. I love the waistband and I think how they've done all the fastenings is actually really quite cool and I might steal that idea for cosplays and stuff in the future because you can't really see anything and it also allows for pockets which we love pockets. <laughs> However the skirt itself the design is all right. I I think it does its job of being a nice autumny piece of clothing. However, am I actually going to wear this? No, <laughs> which is really disappointing because I've done two cloth kits already and both of them have been amazing. And this is the first one that I'm looking at it and I love the fabric and I love the waistband, but the actual skirt itself is just not great. Would it have made a difference if I gathered rather than pleated things? I 
don't really think so. I just don't think it's really my style. However, I know exactly what I'm going to use this skirt for. It is actually going to become a bit of a costume piece. I will not reveal what costume piece at the moment, but it is going to be staying in my wardrobe. I'm not getting rid of it. I do like it. I think it does the job of being a nice autumn -y piece of clothing. And again, the fabric is amazing. If I had to do anything with this, I would probably take the fabric and just make it into something else. However, what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys like this skirt? Do you think it looks a bit weird. The movement of it is, well, spin factor I'd give it maybe 2 out of 10. It was a little bit windy when I was trying to spin so that maybe took away an extra point so let's say 3 to be generous but I don't think overall it's particularly awesome but it's a skirt and it's autumn themed and to be fair it goes quite nicely with my waistcoat which was the aim of the game. Having pockets for this skirt is actually utterly amazing. They fit just about everything from my phone to a bat. <laughs> now let's talk about this puppy. So Benina sewing machine. Honestly Emma are you sure you want it because I think I can give it very good home. This machine is absolutely awesome. There are a few little problems. I think that she may need her foot pedal and the electrical wires replacing at some point but internally she runs like an absolute dream. I did give her a clean up and everything when I was at Orinoco so we didn't really go through all that stuff and in hindsight I should have filmed it so that I could have gone through that stuff with you but she works really nicely. She is super super heavy which is my only complaint. She comes in a plastic case which is nice however even then transporting her like I was taking photos for the thumbnail and it got a bit dicey trying to hold her up. I also totally forgot and I really wish I'd done this just so that I could tell you guys what I thought about it is to use the extension table. It just didn't occur to me and actually in hindsight it probably would have made sewing my skirt a hell of a lot easier had I just put that extension table on but I'm an idiot what can I say so yes machine actually gets about 10 out of 10 and it was so cool sewing a 70s skirt on a 70s sewing machine and that was really good fun <laughs> I mean let's face it Benina's I have yet to find or even hear about a bad one so I wasn't exactly expecting this to go wrong which sometimes with my other sewing machines you kind of get it almost like with my little machine you just kind of expect it to be rubbish and then you get a pleasant surprise when it's not this one I was expecting it to be good and good it was so I mean there's not really a lot else to say about it I really like the front loading bobbing I really wish more machines had that and it will be super interesting to compare this one to yes I did treat myself to a Benina as well mine is quite a bit older than this though so we'll see how that goes I think at some point once I've got a few different machines from around the same time frame I should probably do a battle of the sewing machine or maybe I should just get my singers out and my singers can battle against each other considering that we have a lot of them from a lot of different times and with that guys if you enjoyed this video please remember to drop it a like comment any suggestions that you have down below our sewing machine next month is if everything goes to plan going to be a treadle which I don't think we've had on this channel before well I've certainly never sewed with one before so that should be interesting <laughs> would you guys rather see me make another skirt on that treadle machine or would you rather I make a t-shirt jacket type thing because I have both and I just haven't really decided which one I'd rather do yet and to make sure you don't miss it please do remember to subscribe I post cosplay vintage sewing and vintage sewing machine content every Wednesday and until next week guys have a beautiful day and a wonderful spooky season bye